Hi everyone! Beaded phone charm straps have been trending all over TikTok, Pinterest, the internet in general. This is my time to shine. I used to do so many beaded crafts. So we're getting back into DIYs and tutorials here on So Craftastic. I'm so excited. I'm gonna show you a few different ways to make these. This one has a flower. I'm gonna show you how to do the beaded flower, the strap, which is a big loop, basically. There's a charm variation, which is kind of like a tassel. Let your cat play with it, maybe. And this cute little beaded lizard, a little gecko. Oh my God. Also, I did just start a jewelry making series where I'm going to be making 100 necklaces and beyond. So if you want to check that out, I'll link it below and in the iCard up in the corner there. I'm going to be doing tons of different types of necklaces this year, jewelry, phone charms, rings. I want to do those beaded flower rings and maybe the perler bead ones with a hair straightener. Yeah, that's totally what a straightener looks like, a Pac-Man. Let me know which one of those things sounds the most interesting or if I should just do it all. The funny thing about moving forward in my career this year is that I'm actually taking steps back to the past because this is stuff that I used to do so much and it's basically the essence of my being. I have loved doing this sort of thing my entire life, sorting beads, working with them. Beads, beads, all the beads. If you enjoy this kind of video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are not yet subscribed to the So Craftastic channel. And without further ado, let's get on into the... I forgot what we were making because I just listed so many different things. Let's get on into the tutorial. To make some beaded phone charms, you'll of course need beads, all different shapes, sizes, and colors. And I personally prefer to use plastic because phone screens are glass and using glass beads might cause a bit of a problem. I don't know, but here's the beads. The next supply that you'll need is some type of string, beading cord, stretch cord. You could even use clear fishing line for this if you want to. You'll also need a pair of scissors. And then some optional supplies are these phone charm strap lanyard hook type things. I don't even know the real name. They call them lariat cords on Amazon, or you could just make the loop out of string, which I'll show you both ways. And having glue, clear nail polish, and or a lighter can be really helpful for those pesky strings that fray at the ends. I'm gonna teach you how to tackle that problem if it happens to arise. There are two different types of loops that you can do. One doesn't require any extra supplies. It's the one on the left. You can just use the string that you have or you can use an additional loop that you purchase separately. Let's go ahead and make a loop. I'm gonna show you how to do it without extra materials. So we just have this string. Take your string, lay it out, and make it the length that you want, plus an extra few inches, and then go ahead and cut it. You want it to be longer so you can tie knots at the end, and if you happen to be working with a type of string like this one or another one that frays or unravels, go ahead and use the weapon of your choice. I'm using clear nail polish and I'm going to coat the ends one at a time and this will ensure that the string stays together and makes your life a whole lot easier. It should only take a few seconds to dry and then you can go ahead and move on to creating a loop at the top. As you can see, my string is already folded in half. You'll want the ends to meet like this and then you'll grab that loop and tie a knot. You can see what I'm doing, but the easiest way to explain it is to fold the loop over and create a circle in the middle there. Bring it back up and through that circle. After you are sure that the loop is the length or size that you want it to be, that is where you're going to tighten the knot. I'm holding up my other one as a comparison. I think I'm gonna make this one slightly bigger. Here I'm going to be using stretchy string just to show you that you can use the lighter for some types of string to bond the ends together. Just be extra careful, of course, if you're doing this. I like to personally use an extra long lighter. You could also use a candle if you happen to burn those in your house. That would be really easy. Here I'm using this cell phone strap lariat lanyard whatever. I threaded that onto the loop at the top of the string, and the string is folded in half, by the way, as you can see. Then I'm going to tie that. 
So I'm gonna grab the ends of the string and pull those through the loop of the string. Then it should form a knot around the metal part of the lanyard hook. Personally, when I use these, I want there to be a split ring on it as opposed to a jump ring because a split ring is like a key ring. It's a tiny key ring basically, and it's a lot more sturdy. P.S. If you have pets at your house, especially a cat, please supervise them around string. I don't let Leo in my craft room without me. Or if I do, I make sure I don't have any string out. It can be really dangerous. Okay. Using this stretchy cord, I'm going to create a half and half pattern with my beads. So on one string, I'm going to put colors and on the other, I'm going to put clear. Putting beads on can be completely random if you want that type of look. You can do rainbow, you can do a pattern, you can do whatever you want. Just make sure that the holes of the beads are the right size to go onto the string. So for example, some of these beads will have a smaller hole than the size of the stretch cord, meaning I couldn't use them with this string. So you'd have to use a thinner string with a thinner hold bead, obviously. Luckily, these ones just fit. I'm using two different sizes of the clear round diamondy type beads, and I'm alternating small, large, small, large, small, large as I put them on the string. I'm going to continue stringing on beads one at a time until I have reached the desired length, and I do have one to compare it to, but if you want, I can put the measurements on the screen of mine this is a pretty long one, so it might be a little bit ridiculous for some of you, but I will say that this actually fits around my head so it can double as a necklace if I wanted to wear it that way too. All the clear beads are now on. I'm gonna push the extras off to the side and now I'm doing blue. So I wanna do clear blue, as many clear ones as I can, but I did throw some opaque ones as well. They kind of match my nails, how cute. Anyway, I am putting all different sizes, shapes, and shades of blue onto the string. And there's really nothing else to explain here. So let's go ahead and skip to the end. Here we are putting on the last, I mean, I am putting on the last bead. And I'm going to just tie the ends into a knot. And then another knot, and then I usually do a third because I don't want it to fall apart, but it's up to you. Using multiple knots does make it a little bit more bulky, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. I cut it as close to the knot as I feel comfortable doing, and here's the green one for comparison that I've already finished. Definitely don't trust those ends, so I'm gonna burn them a little bit to fuse everything together. And then I did apply clear nail polish on top of that as well. If you hate the knot, you can disguise it a little bit by adding some sort of charm at the bottom. So here I have added this plastic bead to a jump ring, opened it up with a couple pairs of pliers, and then I went ahead and put that at the bottom of the string where the knot is, right next to it and closed it up and here is what it looks like. <laughs> I don't know why I was so excited there. I've already seen these, but yay. No, I, I really like them. These beads, like I mentioned, do have kind of smaller holes. If you use pony beads or beads with larger holes, the knot should slide inside and it should be totally disguised, camouflaged, hidden, yeah. So another option is to just use bigger hold beads at the end of your project. That is how you create a cell phone strap. Now let's move on to a regular charm that is split like this into two stringy ding tassel guys. This is the one I prepared at the beginning. I'm gonna use some really tiny beads for this. These little iridescent spheres are so pretty. I sorted them beforehand to make sure that I had about the same number of each. And I did notice that some colors had a little bit less, so I was more careful when I was using those, so I didn't completely use them up before the pattern was complete. I also went ahead and picked out these flower beads since they are a little bit bigger and will take up some space and also add some more variety to the look. So it's not as boring and simple, but it would look pretty with just the circle guys if I had enough. Not much to say about this except for that little tiny tip that if you don't have enough of a certain bead to finish your pattern perfectly, 
try to improvise. Here you can see me putting on the light blue one, but since I had a lot less of those, I think I took it off and redid that part so I would have enough for later since there was already a light blue flower. Make sure both sides have the same amount of beads and then I went ahead and put these small clear ones. They're even tinier. Then go ahead and knot each side a few times. I did three knots again, I think, three or four. Just as many as you need so the bead doesn't slip off the end. And of course I knotted both ends. This string is a little bit different, so I made sure to leave a tiny bit hanging at the end and I used clear nail polish to seal it. That's how you do this type of charm, very easy peasy. Now moving on to the cute little lizard guy and the flower. So these are kind of a two for one tutorial. Once you learn how to make the lizard, you automatically know how to do the flower, but I'm going to tell you anyway. For this, I use pony beads and I'm going to use this type of beading cord, which is like a cotton type material. So it's not stretchy at all. And this is probably better for these beady buddy guys. You can see I've arranged the beads into the layout that the lizard needs to be constructed. This is attached to the loop the same exact way that I showed at the beginning, and I've already secured the ends with nail polish. So for the head, I'm gonna start with two beads on one string, and then I'm going to take the end of the other string and put that through the opposite way. Once both ends are through the beads, pull on both ends and make those beads go all the way up to the loop like this. Next, you're gonna take the three beads and this contains the eyeballs. So you'll want the two eyeballs on the side go eyeball, head color, eyeball. Three beads total, like I said. Put the other end of string through all three of them and pull it exactly like you did with the first set of two. After that, another set of two. This will complete the neck part of the gecko. Then we're gonna move on to the legs and these are a little bit different, but still really easy. Go ahead and put those two beads on one side and slide them all the way down to meet the neck. And I'll go ahead and do that for the other side as well. So now both legs are laid out. To construct them, you're going to skip the bead closest to you on the outside and put the string through the inner bead closer to the body. So it should look like this, and then you'll just pull that as tightly as you can. But I find that working on the other side will help to make this process easier. So go ahead and work on the other side now. Do the exact same thing. You're going to leave the one bead alone, but put the string back through the silver bead that's closest to the body, and then tighten it as best as you can. Again, you'll probably need to mess around with this a little bit and do some tweaking so you can tighten that as best as it can get. It's okay if you have a tiny gap, but you don't want anything too noticeable. Now that the legs or arms are done, you can move on to the next body part, which is two beads done the exact same way as the first sets were. Another two beads done the exact same way again. And now two more sets of legs you know the drill. At this stage, you can work on the tail and you can make this as long as you want. I like to do five beads usually. For this, do one at a time, exactly the way that you do the head and the body. I started with white, then silver, turquoise, royal blue, and purple. And finish up by tying a few knots to secure it. Cut the string to the length that you want at the ends and then either use a lighter and or nail polish to secure that. You can use different sizes of pony beads to create these also. You'll just have to use a thinner type of string, but look how cute this little guy is next to the other one. Oh my gosh, they're both really adorable. He's so cute. Also, if you wanna create a flower, you'll do it the exact same way as the head of the gecko. So the first three rows but instead of having the two eyeballs, you'll just want one different color in the middle. You would thread two on, then three, and then two again, tie it off, and you're done. Now I'll show you how to attach these to your phone case. I have an iPhone 8 Plus, so I'm gonna show you where mine would go. Yours might go in a different place. Oh gosh, some of my paint came off, that's okay. So I did take the case off. It's a really grimy case. I should clean it, but I wanted to finish filming. So after putting the loop through that opening at the top, I'm going to grab the end of the charm or the strap 
and I'm gonna pull that all the way through and then tighten it like so. Here is what it looks like. I do wanna give you guys kind of a little disclaimer. So after I put the case back on, um, I'm gonna show you how the stretchy string works with this. This phone is kind of heavy because it is a plus. Some people attach them at the bottom, but my case is broken down there. I should get a new one, but it works fine. Since I use the stretchy string, here is a hold test. This is how far it stretches, so what I'm trying to say is it's probably better to use non-stretchy string if you want it to be a functional cell phone strap. But for someone like me who happens to fidget a lot and doesn't really plan to carry my phone with this, I just want it for the aesthetic, I like the stretchy string because I'll have this sitting next to me while I'm watching TV and I'll catch myself playing with the string and I feel like it's a lot more fun when it's stretchy. So anyone else who gets anxiety or is just fidgety or has like some form of hyperactivity, ADHD, um, you guys might like the stretchy one better. Here's a test with a non-stretchy string. This one is pretty thin, so I might recommend doubling up so it's more sturdy, but it seems to be fine. In the comment section below, let me know which charm from this video is your favorite. Stay tuned for my jewelry making series. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I hope you have a great rest of the day and thank you so much for watching. Bye!